Yeah, so uh, we like to start with um, basically just a set of warm-up questions. Um, sure. And it's just to get us talking. Yeah, yeah. We we want to know first of all. Uh, so what what's the best meal that you make, and what's your favorite food? Oh, um, I suppose a lamb soup. <laughs> lamb soup. Yeah, with barley and onions and a little tomato. Sounds great. Okay. Uh, you kind of caught me off guard there. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't expect I'm that question. Great, huh? I'm not a great cook, actually. My husband does most of the cooking. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not even really very much of a foodie. You know, I grew up on a farm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I know how to do basic farm stuff and basic farm cooking and, um, you know, soups and bread and vegetables and fruit and things like that. But uh, I never really kind of got the fancy food bug. It always seemed to me a bit uh, sort of pretentious and silly. Or maybe I just didn't have the taste buds for it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and where did you, know, where did you grow one up? Of those, one of those genetic <laughs> things. Where, where did you grow up? I grew up... Um, really in the bush in the Okanagan Valley in British Columbia Uh in Canada. Uh And uh, we had a small farm. It was an orchard. And um, it it was the first time that land had been cultivated. Mm -hmm. And that was true of most of the farms around us. That is, the land had never been cultivated before. So everybody was pretty poor, but we were sort of rich in all the things that mattered. Yeah. You know, we kids growing up, we all had chores and jobs, but we had tremendous freedom. Mm. And we roamed the mountains and we swam in the lakes and we did all the crazy things that kids do. And our parents really never knew what we were doing because they were way too busy <laughs> yeah. trying to you know, yeah. keep the wolf from the door. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like an intensely wild place. Um, it was. It's not now, of course. Yeah, life, right, right. Life moves on, but it was very wild there. I never saw a city until I was 18 yeah. when I went to college. <laughs> so so I, I grew up in the sticks in Oklahoma, and I, oh, and I had okay. a sort of similarly unsupervised childhood. Did where I was you? just running around in the woods, basically. My parents had no <gasps> idea where I was. And I think that was actually a profoundly important yeah. thing that shaped the way I am yep. uh, and you know I think like I how think great it would be for my so. kids to do that and yet like we don't let them do that mm-hmm. you know we and, don't really uh, mm-hmm. um, we tried as much as we could especially when we lived in Manitoba because um, it was kind of like Cleveland in the 50s I guess it was mm-hmm. was a very sort of safe place for kids to be mm-hmm. but it is very difficult to to do that now, yeah. but I, I agree. I think it does have a, a profound effect because one thing is you realize as a kid that often you it's up to you yeah. Yeah. to figure out how yeah. to save yourself. That <laughs> self-sufficiency, right? It's super <laughs> and, important. And, Oh yeah, and and you you can't phone anybody, and I mean, it never occurred to us, of course. Um, and you have to problem solve, and you have to be cautious in certain mm-hmm. ways. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah, I think I I don't know. Maybe I think actually small town experiences also have a big effect oh, yeah. on your moral sensibility, yeah. on how you think about things socially. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, in a small town, you would know this, in a small town, there's many, many people who you disagree with. I mean, there are people who are very different. Mm, right. And yet you but see you them all, all the time, to, right? But you see them all the time. Yeah. You have to get along with them. You have to be respectful. You have to, you know, you may have these profound disagreements, but you have to get along yeah, in order yeah. to keep moving. And... So it astonishes me sometimes now to see the way people are quite ready to say, well, I disagree with so-and-so, so I'll never speak to him again. Uh-huh, and I think, uh-huh. well, well, what, what's yeah, with that? Yeah. My, my, my parents, who still are in Oklahoma, this, and this is not sure. to be an Oklahoma-themed thing, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They, my, they, they have a lot of friends with whom they, they differ very mm. profoundly on sort of a social and oh, political yeah. level, you know. So they're my parents are quite liberal. Many people in Oklahoma are very conservative. Sure. Many of their many of their friends are conservative, and that, that divide between them seems like something I don't experience in my own life, you know. Because somehow I don't have friends. My my friends are sort of inside the you know liberal university bubble. <laughs> and, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. 
Uh, anyhow, no, I think I think small town experience could be really yeah, good. Wow. Yeah. So let's do one other quick warm up, and then we'll get into the the meat of the book. Um, which mm. dead celebrity, historical figure, or scientist would you most like to have a beer with? Oh, am I glitching? Yeah, so uh, just, as, just as soon as I asked the question, it's been <laughs> fine on my end. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it cut out. Okay. Who would I most like to, like to have a beer yeah, with? Yeah, scientist, historical figure, celebrity. Well, you know, the person that I did used to have lunch with a lot and dinner with a fair amount, too, was Francis Crick. Mm-hmm. Mm. And we, uh, we were really quite good friends for a very long time after uh, Paul and I moved to San Diego, which was in, in large measure because he was very keen that that should happen. Mm. Um, but it was always fun. And he was always super interesting. Mm-hmm. And um, he, often to the lunch, when we would go for lunch, which we did at the faculty club about once a week, he would have a paper that he'd worked on and he'd want to sit there and, and discuss this mm-hmm. paper. And it was, it being with him a lot in those days really taught me how much fun science is. Yeah. And I mean, I had sort of known to, the, to a degree because of course I did work on neuroscience in Manitoba, but it was always such fun with Francis and he would laugh about certain things and, you know, make up funny stories. And, yeah, it was wow. great. What were the wow. subjects of these papers that you were talking about? It was heavy well, molecular is when, biology or? No, 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 okay. no, no. This is really, you know, once he moved to the Salk and from about, let's say, uh, 1985 onwards, mm-hmm. he was really interested in the brain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, uh, and you know, there could be things that would be fascinating to him from molecular biology, and he'd go to those talks, but the talks he really wanted to go to and discuss afterwards were always in neuroscience. I see. I see. Mm. And, and as you know, of course, he got very, very interested in the problem of consciousness, mm-hmm. and he and Christoph did did um, some really kind of interesting work on on that score. But so we talked about consciousness a lot and we we had all kinds of really interesting disagreements. But fundamentally, I think we we were in agreement. Mm -hmm. But he liked to disagree for the sheer fun of it and to see, you know, really. Sounds like Marty. Uh, okay, yeah. fair. And, and, and it was great because in part he wanted to see what would happen mm-hmm. and, and where you would take a, a position or whether you would dredge up new evidence he hadn't heard of while you were being yeah. pushed like yeah. this. Huh. And that's what made it great fun, actually. Yeah. And so <clears throat> people are always amused by this, but some of the best philosophical conversations I ever had in my life were with Francis and, and often at, at tea at uh, Terry Sanofsky's lab at uh, the Salk. Hmm. We would all hang around there and have tea and argue and Francis would propose something outlandish just to see what we'd do with it. Hmm. And it was great. <laughs> it was like really a fascinating great. Fascinating guy. Yeah. Well, 